continue our conversation that we started a few weeks ago. Um, uh, the theme is New Birth, New Birth, and if you need a subtitle, uh, we'll call it It's In Your Mind. It's in your mind. I know you've heard it before, but I think it's true, and we may as well say it and admit it. Perhaps you've been, Mama said, there would be days like this. If your mother was like my mother, my mother had a way of prophesying into my life to tell me the good things that I would do, but also to warn me of the travesty that might happen if I don't pay attention and don't live according to the lessons that she taught me. Mother said, Mama said, there will be days like this when people will profess to be your friend, and yet when it really gets down to the get down, they are nowhere to be found. Mama said that there would be days like this when everything you thought was working for you turns out was not working for you, but perhaps was even working against you, and you have to figure out a new way and a new course of how you're going to proceed from where you are to where you want to be. Mama said uh, there would be days like this when no matter how hard that you work, it appears that your money always seems to be a little bit short of what you need for the moment. Uh, Mama said that there would be days like this. I'ma just give it to you like Shirley said it. Shirley said, if you don't learn to listen, a hard head makes a... Mama said that there would be days like this. I would suggest to you that Mama didn't get that through osmosis or pull it out of the air. Fact of the matter is, Jesus said that there would be days like this this when you look around and not only are there rumors of wars but there are very real wars going on and people lying to us about why we are at war jesus said it would be days like this when children will turn on their parents uh, just the other day i read of how a teenager took a shotgun into his parents room and killed both of them in their bed while they slept jesus said there would be days like this when parents would turn on children how often do we read of some parent who had no business having a child because they took their frustration physically out on a baby jesus said there would be days like this when you can't tell one season from another I mean one day is cold the next day is hot one day you need your air conditioning the next day you need a heater one day you can sport your cool sweater the next day you trying to wear your tank top Jesus said there would be days like this but it's not all bad sisters and brothers because I would suggest to you that whenever God allows us to deal with difficult times and challenges and when confusion tries to take over when evil tries to set its tricks and its traps that's the time for opportunity for those who know the Lord for those uh, who are walking according to his favor for those who know that they have been born again I would suggest to you that this is a great time to be alive and this is a great time to be in the Lord even though it appears that sometimes all hell is breaking loose and people are trying to call hell heaven and heaven hell I would suggest to you this is the time for the people of God to come alive not only so but this is a great time to exercise the gift of God called innovation if you dare to think outside of the box if you dare to risk or uh, risk it all on the idea that God has given to you I would suggest to you that God is still a God who is able to turn evil situations into something good for his people but it will 
not happen if you're waiting for a white knight to ride up on a horse and save you from your situation. It will not happen if you sit by the mailbox and wait for the government to send you a check. It will not happen, sisters and brothers, if you still looking for Mr. Look So Good, Miss Smell So Good to come along and fix everything in your life. Everything you need is already in you. In fact of the matter is, I'll become more specific and say, what you need is not just in you, it's in your mind. God will give you the thoughts that you need to cause the big idea, to cause the change in your, I know I'm right about it, because just like it takes a small seed, uh, all it takes is a flicker, all it takes is a flame, is a small flame of a thought, uh, and God will turn that small flicker into a fire, and the next thing you know, God not only sets your consciousness on fire, God will set your life on fire in a good way for him. This is a great time. I don't care what the devil is saying. I don't care what your neighbor is saying. I don't care what your boo is saying. This is a great time to be alive and in the Lord because if you dare to think for just a moment, if you dare to use the best muscle you have, God can and God will do great things in your life. Does anybody believe that today? Does anybody believe that Check what the record says, uh, Nicodemus, uh, the ruler of the Jews, uh, he who has, se who seemingly has it all, goes to our Lord and Savior, and he want, and he desires more knowledge. Check it. Uh, he walks up to the Lord uh, at night season, they say, and he shows up with a compliment. Rabbi, he calls him, teacher. Don't miss it. Uh, that Nicodemus is of the aristocracy. He's of the elite crowd. Uh, he's of the bougie crowd. He's of the little bit better than the rest of the Negroes crowd. Uh, and Nicodemus goes to Jesus, uh, a peasant from Nazareth, Jesus from the backwood, Jesus who ain't even much go to nobody's school. And Nicodemus goes to Jesus uh, and he seeks knowledge and shows up and calls him teacher. Y'all still with me? He says, Rabbi or teacher, we know you must be from God uh, because of the signs uh, and the wonders that we see. We know you must be from God uh, because of the signs uh, and the wonders that we see. Do not miss it. Uh, Nicodemus is caught up on miracles. Uh, Nicodemus is caught up on signs and wonders. Uh, so Jesus says, hold up, wait a minute. Uh, hold up, wait a minute. Let me put some word in it. Let's take it from the top. Y'all still with me? Y'all still with me? Jesus says, let's take it from the top. If you want to roll with me, if you want my kind of knowledge, you must be born again. Y'all walking with me? I love it. I love it because Jesus says, uh, in, uh, in other words, Jesus suggests to him, uh, suggests to Nicodemus, uh, I could take you where you want to go, but you can't get there until you've been born again. Uh-huh, and maybe I ought to stick a pen right there because I know there's some people in the Lord's house today who have, who have a knowledge of the Lord, who've been involved in the praise and worship, uh, who understand the goodness of the Lord, and perhaps you've even seen uh, some signs and wonders. I think I'm preaching to some people in the house today who want to move forward. I think I'm preaching to some people who know that you still have a lot to offer, that the best is yet to come in your life that this is not the end, that God doesn't plan for you to go out like this uh, and you're wondering, how do I get from where I am uh, to where I want to be? And God sent me to Elm Grove today to tell somebody, you can't start in the middle, baby, and you can't start at the end. You got to take it from the top. Mm -hmm. That's my next point because I am afraid uh, that we miss the point that Jesus teaches Nicodemus. Jesus teaches Nicodemus uh, that you got to build uh, on what you already have. Uh, in other words, uh, this is not a hop, skip, and jump religion. Uh, you got to work for what you want. You got to learn what you need. Uh, you got to push forward, perhaps sometimes uh, one step at a time. Uh, and the real saints in here will testify that every now 
and then uh, you will take one step forward and get knocked back two steps. But the real saints will testify just because I get knocked back two steps don't mean I'm going to remain where I was if you knock me back two steps you better put your guards up because I'm coming back three steps am I preaching to the right crowd check it again I know I know where I am and I know the culture uh, the culture uh, 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 that my message goes uh, that my message goes into and I have discovered that the problem is we in the church ought to be ashamed of ourselves Mm -hmm. We who are of the body of Christ ought to be ashamed of ourselves because we have fallen for this, uh, uh, this contemporary pseudo-theology that suggests that God will do everything in a moment. Now I know that he is God and there is nothing impossible with our God. And God moves like only God can move and God can do what only God can do. But experience tells me, you didn't hear me, but experience tells me that God will not do for you what you can do for yourself and God won't do for you in an instant uh, what it may take you a while to do so that you can learn the lessons that you need to learn along the way so that when you get there you won't act a fool and if you don't believe me ask all the lottery winners that, that were rich today and broke next month are we still walking together so check what happens. So, so the word is, uh, listen, uh, uh, I know what you've been hearing, and I know some of you have been watching television and get all poured on you and sending in your 1999. <laughs> but you better understand, if you want to be wealthy, and God wants you to be wealthy, you're supposed to prosper, but it is not going to happen by standing up and repeating the words, want money coming to me right now. You have to build the wealth. Somebody say build wealth. build wealth. I ought to have one or two witnesses in here that will testify and help somebody that's on your row. You got to work at it, baby. You got to put yourself on a budget. You have to learn how to save. You got to learn how to walk past the sale sometime. You have to learn how to say, I'll get it when I can afford it. You have to learn how to ask yourself some questions. Uh, do I really need this? Uh, or is this going to feed uh, uh, some part of me that I don't need to feed? Uh, you have to build wealth. Somebody say build on it. Yeah. I've also noticed, I've also noticed that many of us want to get, uh, want to want to become a part of today and be the boss tomorrow. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, you just got your little degree. <laughs> but somebody in here who has been on the job will go on and testify that all book knowledge does not transfer. <laughs> You better help. You better help somebody in here sitting in here trying to be cute. They think because they can put two or three theories together that they're going to turn the company around or turn the school around. But you have experience in that thing. You know that every now and then you just have to go through some things in order to make. Am I right about that one? I mean, theory is good. Theory is good, but praxis is better. Anybody working with me in here? Uh, can I keep going? Can I keep going? The only the other thing I notice the other thing I notice is that is that we think promotion happens without scars. <laughs> you ask anybody who has reached a certain level in their walk with God in their career, and they will quickly roll up their sleeves and their pant legs to show you the scars that come along with this ascension. You know, you've heard this before. Uh, the preachers are, are, are known for saying today, "Don't, don't celebrate my glory until you learn how to pre appreciate my story." I love it because. Because every now and then, every now and then, you'll run into somebody, and I know you do, who, who ask you what it took to get where you are. Uh, 
uh, how did you stay married for 37 years? And, and all of these kinds of questions where they don't understand that you didn't just get there by a blink of an eye. You didn't get there because you knew, you knew a magic formula or you turned around and spit in the corner three times. They don't understand that you gotta go through some got to go through some things. There's scars that come along with this position. I got, I got a line of haters because of this position. I've been, I've been up all night sometimes. I, I've been up where other people were sleeping sometimes. Uh, I've had to give up on some things. Uh, I've watched other people be blessed while I was still in my struggle. This doesn't come overnight. <laughs> Let's take it from the top. Let's take it from the top. You got to be born again. And this idea of new birth, get this, because I know what we do in the church, we try to make this a hyper-spiritual situation, uh, some transcendent thing that's happened. But I would suggest to you that new birth starts in your mind. Oh, you missed that. New birth starts in your mind. If you can't think it, you can't believe it. Oh, that sounds like something somebody should have tweeted right there. If you can't think it, uh, then you cannot believe it. Perhaps that's why uh, uh, Paul said to the Romans, uh, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed uh, by the renewing of your mind. Did you get it? New birth comes through new thinking. Uh, if you have the audacity and the nerve uh, to think things, think things over and come up with new ideas uh, rather than rehashing the old ideas, ideas, uh, then you can have new birth. New birth needs to new life, leads to new life. And don't you know new life leads to new production? Aren't you tired of doing the same thing over and over and getting the same results over? and over? Aren't you tired of metaphorically hitting your head against the wall? Aren't you tired of practicing what Einstein called insanity, doing the same thing, expecting new results? If you want new results, you got to have birth. Boy, you should have said amen on that one. If you want new results, then you got to have a new birth. Can I keep going? Can I keep going? Check it, sisters and brothers. So Jesus says, essentially, here it is. Here's the question uh, that Jesus put before Nicodemus, and I'm afraid that God is putting before us today. What kind of life do you want? Ooh. What kind of life do you want? You can have something that looks like life. Oh, you can have pseudo life. You can, you can have something that the world calls life, or you can have life and that more abundantly. What kind of life do you want? Can I tell you, baby, you can't have the life that you want if it's connected to God until you take it from the top, until you dare to think differently so that God can can exercise his amazing power in your life to cause new birth through your mind such that you can have a new life. Are we still together? Are we still together? I don't want to move too quickly. In fact, I want you, I want to take a moment or two and let you think about it. Is, is, uh, uh, is what you calling a life really living? Mm -hmm. I ain't talking about your problems. And I know what I said, English teachers. You're going to have to forgive me on this one. I ain't talking about your problems. I'm talking about your life. Because you do know you can live and have problems too. Uh, God never said that problems stop you from living. You give up, not God. Boy, that's another sermon for another time. Uh, yeah, but, but, but if, if what you look at, can you call that living? You call it making. <laughs> or do you call it barely getting by? What you call, and I'm not talking about your money. Can I tell you, you can live and God can make sure that you have everything that you need in this world's currency. It ain't about your money. It ain't about your problem. But can you live? Or what you call life really not living at all. Walter Brueggemann suggests that what this world calls life is not living and they somehow seduce us into believing that if we collect enough and if, if we collect enough and if we are able and if we are able to pat ourselves on the back enough then we can call that living except at the end of the day when you look at your life can you say that what I did matter? Is what I'm doing right now, does it count in the kingdom? Or am I just prancing around like a pious peacock so folk could tell me how wonderful I am? 
Mm, I know you didn't come to church to hear this, but I'm going to preach it anyway. Mm -hmm. what, what I do, does it contribute to the kingdom? Or, do I, or am I pleasing my flesh? Because you do know that which is born of the flesh is of the flesh. Uh, what I do is it just pleasing my flesh and I'm tacking God's name to it. Ooh, I think I'm on somebody's street now. Because some of you have been doing some stuff in the name of the Lord and God is standing back saying, I ain't got nothing to do with that. <laughs> so Jesus asked the question, what kind of life? Do you want, I don't know about you, but I want a John chapter 10 and verse 10 life. You do remember that one, right? Where Jesus says, the thief cometh but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I came that they might have life, not just life, but that more abundantly. I've taught you this before, but let me give it to you again. The first time he says life, he uses the word bios, which means just breathing. I'm just here. I'm taking up space. The second time when he says life more abundantly, he uses the word zoe, and zoe means a full, robust, complete life, all the way satisfied. Don't need the world to give me nothing because God is giving me everything that I need. I don't know about you, baby, but I don't want the first kind of life to just get by, barely make it, take up space, getting in other people's way. I want the second life. I want zoe life. I want the life that only God can give. Which brings me to my next point. Which brings me to my next point. Look at what he says. He says you must be born again. Now, the, most of us think that the most important word in that phrase is born. But I would suggest to you that the most powerful word in that phrase is again. Again, because again means from above. And it suggests to us, sisters and brothers, uh, that in this issue of new life through new thinking, that there are some things that only God can do. You ain't feel me? You ain't feel me? There are some things that only God can do. And can I tell you, as it relates to changing our minds for the better, only God can do that. Okay, okay, okay. Let's take off our church clothes for just a second. Uh, you know and I know uh, that all of us who were saved, loved the Lord, and on our way to heaven have made some grand professions based upon our thoughts. I made up my mind. I ain't never gonna do it again. I made up my mind. I'm gonna live right for the Lord. I made up my mind. This the last time. <laughs> Famous last words. Because the last time turns into another time. <laughs> and another time and another and so we can think in our own capacity uh, with our with our own abilities and really believe that a change is going to come but can I suggest to you today that real change can only come from God because only God can change your mind like it needs to be changed do I have any witnesses in the house come on and say amen if I'm telling the truth Okay, we, we have to get on up out of here, so let me give it to you like this and we'll, and we'll be gone. Check what happens. Nicodemus start tripping, and you know, he's already of the elite crowd, the bougie crowd, so he calls himself getting smart with the Lord. I'm not making it up, read it for yourself. He calls himself getting smart with the Lord. Can't, don't, you can't, uh, uh, it, uh, don't, I'm trying not to cuss. Don't smart people. <laughs> Use your imagination. Don't smart people get on your nerves. You know what I want to call them, don't you? <laughs> so, so here he is. Uh, so what you mean? Does this mean that in order to have the life that I want, the knowledge that I need to have the new life, I have to return to my mother's womb? I love it because Jesus says, stop tripping. Because uh, everybody is born one time. <laughs> Everybody's born one time. That's the birth through water. Everybody has been through water. But if you want this kind of life, you have to have a spiritual rebirth. That is, it has to be the work of the Holy Ghost. Now, I've taken a look at this thing, and verse 8 just seems to jump out to me. For Jesus says, while you tripping, let me explain to you how this thing works. He says, have you considered the pneuma, the wind, the Old Testament, uh, the Hebrew, the ruah? Have you considered the wind? The wind blows and nobody can control the wind. 
fact of the matter is, uh, with all of man's technology and all of our enlightenment, we can't put a formula together to tell the wind when to blow, when to blow, and in which direction to blow. We can put, uh, we can put together all the books that we want. And we can come together and have scientific conferences uh, from now until the Lord comes back. But not one of us, sisters and brothers, uh, has the nerve to determine how hard uh, the wind will blow, uh, uh, how long the wind will blow. The wind just does uh, what the wind uh, does. Uh, fact of the matter is, uh, if you've ever spent a summer in Louisiana, you learn to appreciate the wind. If you've ever spent the summer and had to be outside for in a period of time and God allows the wind uh, to blow just a little bit your way, every now and then uh, it'll make you bend over and thank God for a cool breeze. Am I preaching to anybody in the house? Now, I meant that literally, uh, but somebody knows that sometimes uh, life can resemble a summer in Louisiana. Life can look like, yes, uh, the heat just keeps on coming. Uh, yeah, you may, you may wonder what in the world uh, did I ever do to find myself under this kind of heat. Uh, if I turn to the right, the heat is hitting me in my face. Uh, if I turn to the left, you know how the story goes. Uh, but every now and then, uh, in a figurative way, uh, God will allow a cool breeze to blow. A cool breeze, uh, that's a kind word uh, sent straight from heaven. Uh, a cool breeze, uh, that's a blessing that only God could have produced. Uh, a cool breeze, uh, that favor opens a door for you. Uh, a cool breeze, uh, that reminds you uh, you are a child of God. Uh, a cool breeze, uh, that sparks a thought, uh, that sparks a thought, uh, that sparks another thought, uh, that makes you figure out how to get out uh, a cool breeze I tell you that reminds you uh, that in the end uh, when the dust settles uh, when tragedy is over when the war is over you win in the end uh, a cool breeze uh, that reminds you uh, from whence you have come uh, that the Lord has brought you and your people uh, from a mighty long way uh, a cool breeze uh, that reminds you uh, that you have the blood of King and queens uh, pumping through your vein uh, a cool breeze uh, that reminds you uh, that the devil in hell uh, can't devise a trick uh, can't design a trap uh, to hold you down uh, a cool breeze uh, somebody say cool breeze uh, the Lord said uh, that the wind blows, uh, the pneuma blows, uh, but then he said, uh, just like the wind, uh, you can't control the Holy Ghost. Uh, that's where I've been trying to get you, uh, that you need uh, the Holy Ghost. Uh, new thoughts uh, come from the Holy Ghost. Uh, fresh ideas uh, come from the Holy Ghost. Uh, the idea you need, uh, it comes from the Holy Ghost. Uh, I have discovered uh, that there's some people in the house uh, that you've been in church uh, but you don't have uh, the Holy Ghost. Uh, you know the songs uh, but you don't have uh, the Holy Ghost. Uh, you know the prayers uh, but you don't have uh, the Holy Ghost. Uh, may I hear from the ones uh, who have uh, what God calls uh, my spirit. God sent me to the 12 o'clock service uh, to tell you today that where you are and where he's taking you and the blessing that lie ahead and the favor that's on your life, if you're going to make it up, uh, you need the power. You need the power. You need the power. Promotion is on the way, but you need power. It's going to work out, uh, but you need power. Can I show you, uh, and I'm out of here, uh, what it means to have power. Some of us uh, are like this first ball. Do you notice that they're both balls? Uh, they're both round. Uh, they're both meant to do the same thing. But one has power. But one has power. And the other doesn't. Uh, this is what it looks like uh, when you have no power. Because every now and then, 
life will drop you. And if you don't have power, you'll stay down. If you don't have power, you can't get up. If you don't have power, they keep their foot on your neck. But for those of you who, uh, who have the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, both balls, uh, both round, uh, both the men to do the same thing, except this ball, uh, it has power. So when it's dropped, it bounced right back. May I hear from the ones uh, in the house uh, that's ready to bounce right back. Give God the praise. 